Nolan? Manuel, congrats on the win. Uh, Eight-month delay to, to get in there and finally fight Daniel Veichel. Uh, did it play out the way that you thought it would? I want to say better. It would have been better if I got the finish in the first, like I said it would. Or even in the second when I, you know, got, dropped him with that body shot. But all that matters is that we got the victory. I'm healthy. He's healthy. He'll have a safe flight home. He'll fight again. And I know people will be excited to watch him fight after this. Likewise with myself in this Grand Prix. So I'm looking forward to, to going out. Two down, two more to go. And I know you said uh, done inside one, and you almost had it done inside two. Were you surprised that he was able to, to absorb that much damage and, and get up and, and fight back? Yeah. It's over 50 fights, man. Over 50 fight veteran right there. He's fought all over the world, fought all different types of fighters. So he's got that experience. He's fought for the world title twice. Almost had the champion as well, too. So that, that's a great fighter that I fought. And uh, my hat's off to him. And I'm glad that I got the victory back. So take me into your mind while you're, while you're hitting him with that flurry. You're on top of him. Uh, is there any concern in your mind? Like, hey, I got I to gotta take it easy because I'm, I'm hitting this guy with a lot of shots and he's not, he's not out of it. Yeah, a little bit. I want to say uh, it's been more than a year that I fought. So it's not only the eight-month delay of what everything has been going on in the world, but more than a year that I actually got to get back in there and gone the distance with that tough of an opponent. So I believe I showed my experience as well, too, and my skill level. And that's something that you only learn and grow from that in fights. So what feels best, to, uh, getting a win after a long layoff, getting one step closer to a million dollars or avenging your loss? Honestly, getting that win back. Uh, he taught me a very valuable lesson back in 2016, the 25 year old me. And I thought that was the best me. And now I'm that only, you know, that the arrow's got to be pulled back before it can be shot forward. So I'm very glad that I got that victory back. I'm glad that I even lost that fight back then because it wouldn't have put me into this position that I'm at now and made me the fighter that I am now. So, uh, What's sweeter is getting that victory back and advancing to the semifinal. Do you feel like that this tournament, you're, you're like peaking in your career at the right time? I mean, this is seven out of eight, I think. Now, um, it seems like you're you're in line with a, a you know you're in line to perform at your career best as we go forward here. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you learn and grow in each fight. Obviously, with training, you're learning and growing every day and picking up new things. But I'm not trying to kill my training partners and put them in the hospital. It's what I'm trying to do that to my opponents. And I know what they're trying to do to me too. So knowing that I got a guy who's trying to take my head off and he couldn't, he couldn't even touch me. That's what helped me grow and learn today. And also to be able to come back from me trying to put him away. And he was able to come back from it and still, you know, pull on throughout the whole fight. So uh, we only learn and grow in that through fights. And I learned a lot tonight. I take it you're going to rush out of here and, and watch uh, the main event and see who you'll be fighting next? Absolutely. And I'm excited to see who I get next. Obviously, uh, I got, you know, this one victory over someone who's got a win over me. So you know who I want next. Thanks, man. Dan, thank you. Hey, man, you're a great, uh, great win tonight. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, you, you were just about to answer my question, actually. When it comes to a big, the big fight tonight, would you rather see the rematch against Pitbull or mix it up with a guy like Pedro? I'd like to mix it up with Pedro. That'd be, that'd be good. But I want Patricio Pitbull. That's who I want. That's obviously what the most wins right now. He currently holds the most wins. He's the current champ champ. So of my division and of lightweight and has the most fights out of anyone in this Grand Prix uh, in Bellator. And he's shown how long he's been on up on top. So this is, that's definitely who I want next. And if he were to win and you were to face him and say you were to beat him and actually win the finals, there is an opportunity for you to potentially face off against Daniel again in a trilogy fight. Would you be interested in doing that down the line? If he stays at featherweight and once I win this Grand Prix and he continues to climb back up, obviously, yes, you know, the, this whole Grand Prix was filled with nothing but great fighters. And even if guys who didn't advance, they're still in the division. They can still go on and progress. And eventually that's what makes for title defenses for me. Donna. Hey, how's it going? Congratulations on a great performance. When we spoke before the fight, I asked you what was different now than in 2016, and you said your conditioning, your nutrition. And that was what stuck with me going into the third round, because after that second, my natural thought was to go, fuck, I think this guy's 
blown it. I think the fact that he hasn't finished it now, I think maybe he's going to struggle, especially with three rounds coming up. But it felt like you could have gone 10, 20 rounds tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I still feel like I could go now. I didn't want to take the gloves <laughs> off, but uh, they rushed to take the gloves off me and cut the wraps off. But um, yeah, it's frustrating. I did want the stoppage. I really did. But with more than a year, it's been longer than a year since I fought, and I never had that before, especially I'm young, I'm healthy, and I'm able to do this, but I'm so grateful that we're back, and fights are be able to put back on, and it's not just for myself, but all the other fighters as well, too, in this Grand Prix, and throughout the whole world, in, in you know, all these other fighters fighting tonight, I know everyone's been itching to want to get back in there, to, to do this, to do what they love to do, and to go out there and perform, and to take care of themselves financially, but uh, man, I wanted that stoppage so bad, but uh, we learn and grow from these things. So that's only going to make me a much better fighter. I ask this question to fighters all the time about the moment with their corner after they win or after they lose. Um, and, you know, I ask them what was said. I ask them what exactly happened. I want to know what exactly was said between you and without wanting to sound too cheesy, our Lord, uh, when you were in the middle of the cage, uh, when you were kneeling there, what, what, what were you, what were you saying to, uh, to God then? <sighs> I'm just uh, loving what I do and doing what I love and giving all the glory and honor to a great God above. That's, you know, uh, I wouldn't be here in this position without, uh, without God. And so my faith is in God and Jesus Christ who died for my sins. And I've just been so grateful for my teammates, uh, my team, uh, the Bellator, and soaking up the moment. Uh, enjoying everything and I've taken everything as a blessing uh, with this whole pandemic with everything that's going on in the world uh, man it was just so confusing I didn't know if I would uh, be able to fight again this year or, or what was going to happen with everything that's been going on uh, yeah I was scared man I was worried but I never lost hope and I never lost faith and obviously I was working throughout the whole time with my whole team uh, even after, actually as soon as my fight got canceled I came back home, I was in the gym on Monday, and then that's when the quarantines and lockdowns and all that stuff happened, and I had to start training outside, hitting pads with my friends in their backyards. But I just never lost hope, never lost faith, and I think that's what able, would enable me to, to get the victory here tonight. Jay? Congratulations on the win, uh, Emmanuel. Um, I, I know you want to be one and done, and five and done doesn't have the same rhyme to it, but uh, <laughs> is, there an, is there an upside to going the distance tonight, uh, especially with the next one being a title fight and such a big fight and you being off, getting those five rounds in under your belt? A little bit. Now that's twice now. I know I've, uh, I can go five rounds. And obviously, as aforementioned, it looked like I can go 10, 20, and just to the death, right? But that's the type of person and fighter that uh, – I guess I strive to be, I've always tried to be that I'm like, not like every fight has got to be like a Rocky movie and to the death, but you know, um, that's what the fans want to see. That's what the crowd wants to see everybody. You know, they want to see finishes and stoppages and that's what I want as well too, to be known for. But that guy has more fights who I just fought. Daniel Vigil has more fights than anyone in this Grand Prix, probably put together. So what is he 50 and 12 now or 51 and 12 or something like that. Been fighting for over 10 years. So, I was probably in junior high when this guy was fighting in like Czech Republic or something like that. And uh, my hat's off to him. So knowing that I'm fighting uh, guys that have been doing this longer than, you know, I've been training, uh, that says a lot. And knowing that uh, I was able to go out and get a victory over him, as I mentioned as well, he fought for the world title twice, almost had the current champion as well too. And then even the second time around, the current champion couldn't stop him. So uh, I fought a great fighter tonight. And he's got the most fights in this Grand Prix as well, too, outside of the, you know, outside of the champion. He's got the most fights. So uh, my hat's off to him. It was a big statement tonight, uh, obviously. If it does turn out to be Pitbull next, do you see him as having grown the way that you've grown since that first fight? I believe so. I think uh, he's got the same hunger, maybe. It, it's harder when you're on top, being the most dominant champion. Now you're the champ champion too, so of another weight class that who knows what's going on right now at lightweight. But as far as us in this Grand Prix, I know he's uh, hungry and determined to want to go out and take out uh, Pedro Carrillo. But I know Pedro's young and hungry and ready to do the same too. I think what him and McKee are the youngest guys in this thing. So I know how he's looking to make a statement and want to go out and win this as you know as well. Likewise with every you know the other two guys that are left. But. Uh, I'm going to go with Pitbull on that one. And I just know I want it more than him. And I, I want that win back.
Simon, or I'm sorry, Santi Santiago. Hola, Emmanuel. Buena noches y felicidades. Muchísimas gracias, hermano. ¿Cómo estás? Your cardio was really impressive to watch. Besides the hard work and the dedication, is that a, is that cardio a natural gift from your Mexican DNA? I believe so. Gloria a Dios. Y para toda la gente mexicana también así somos. Nos ponemos las pilas y pues adelante, siempre adelante. But uh, and a natural gift as well too. Uh, I've just known myself as a cardio king. And I'm actually, you know, like I said, upset that I didn't get the stoppage, knowing that my gas tank is that well and I could have put him out. But I'm proud of myself that I know I just start fast, start strong, dominate, put them all away. And, you know, I owned him for five rounds. So for five rounds, he still, you know, couldn't have anything over me. And I accredit that to my experience and my gas tank and the Mexican blood that pumps through my veins. You are still pretty young, Emmanuel, and your record doesn't lie, man. You won seven of your last eight in a division filled with killers. How much would it mean for you to bring the featherweight belt to Mexico? Uh, como los demás también, es, es un sueño y es una de mis metas bien grandes y algo que quiero hacer, pero I'll say it in English too. Uh, that's one of my biggest dreams and aspirations and goals, and that's something that I'm looking forward to do for all the, the Mexican people here in the United States of America and in Mexico as well too, and all over the world, because I know I have a lot of family members, you know, with, you know, Mexican descent or, you know, straight from Mexico and living in other countries as well now too, pursuing their dreams or uh, turning their dreams into reality wherever they are, and that's where I'm at right now here being able to do that in Bellator and be the first Mexican Bellator featherweight world champion. All right, a couple more here. Simon? Hey, Emmanuel. Congratulations on the win. I just want to know, you, you talk about it was difficult and, and you felt it in the heart that you, you really wanted that finish there, but can you explain to me how difficult it was uh, not getting over anxious um, once you, you heard him to the body there? It was difficult because that's been on my bucket list as a fighter to stop somebody to the body. And it was right there. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And uh, I wouldn't say uh, I got ahead of myself. But, man, with a guy with over 50 professional fights, um, he weathered the storm. And he knew what he did, what he had to do to be able to survive and to be able to still be in it. Because I know he still wanted to take me out and go out in advance and, you know, win this Grand Prix, just like how all the other guys who started this wanted to do that as well, too. But uh, even though he doesn't actually hold it, he holds and showed that he's got the fighter spirit and the warrior spirit and the desire to want to be a champion. And that's what able, enabled it to make it such a great fight. So I was about to say, I hope the fans are entertained. But everyone who's watching and everyone who watched at CBS, I hope you're entertained. Hey, Manuel, Keith Schillen for sure, dog. How you doing, my man? Uh, I'm excellent. Uh, first of all, I think you're being really tough on yourself when you, you were a little upset that you didn't get the finish. I thought that was probably like your best performance to date. You looked incredible, man. That said, I thought you won all five rounds pretty handily. Are you surprised that the judges, I mean, all three judges gave Daniel one round. One of the judges gave him two rounds. So what were you thinking when you were hearing the scorecards? I wasn't thinking about it too much. I wasn't trying to do any math right there at the end. Uh, I, I broke myself of that over the years and all the fights that I've been in. I, I, I held and put too much pressure on myself of thinking, what are the judges thinking? What is the refs thinking or coaches thinking or all this, whatever people thinking. And I'm just like, it's just mattered what I think. And I made him swing and miss. And I was Rick James out there, man, can't touch this. You know what I mean? So yeah, he got one or two punches and he achieved what one little takedown at the end by catching a kick. So it wasn't even a legitimate takedown, but I'm proud of myself because I knew that a lot of people want to take me down, hold me down, dominate me, control me, and just, you know, want to finish me, but I'm happy to say that they couldn't and can't. So I'm uh, continuing to strive myself to be that much of a better fighter and to go out there and dominate in each and every single position. And wherever the fight goes, I win, I dominate. My last question for you, Emmanuel. Everyone keeps saying you've won seven of your last eight, but the one that you're missing was that loss to Pitbull. What have you learned from that fight that's going to make you beat him next time when you face him? If you face him, I apologize. Yeah, if it's Pedro, well, we're about to see, right, how, how this goes down. But uh, believing in myself even more. Uh, I spoke with John McCarthy afterwards, and he knows there's something that uh, about not pulling the trigger. 
and I know that I, I know that I can stop him. Likewise, I know I could stop Daniel Weichel too, but now the fight's over and he was able to, to go out and just survive and get the decision. But I know it's going to be a tough flight for, uh, home for him after all the strikes that I landed on him. But I know I can stop the current champion as well too, and I'm the worst fight for him and everyone else that's left in this Grand Prix. But I know how dangerous I am, and it's just all about believing in your greatness. I think we've got a couple in Spanish here. Luis? Hola, ¿cómo estás? Este, soy Luis de MMA Pit. Eh, primero que nada, felicidades por tu victoria. Muchísimas gracias, Luis. Buenas noches, ¿cómo estás? Bien, gracias. Este, quisiera preguntarte, no hay mucha presencia latina, mexicana en Bellator. Tenemos a Gregorio Pérez, pero tú ahorita estás en una, en una parte donde vas a, gane quien gane esta noche, tú vas a disputar el cinturón eh, en tu siguiente fase, en la siguiente fase de este torneo. Eh, ¿Qué significa esto para ti, representar a México y Latinoamérica en este, en esta gran, en este gran compromiso? Pues me da mucha alegría y mucha motivación. Toda la gente mexicana y pues de Latinoamérica me inspiran. Y ah, estoy, estoy bien motivado y emocionado ahorita para, para lograr mis metas y para ser el primer campeón mexicano en Estados Unidos y para todo México y los mexicanos en Estados Unidos o en todo el mundo donde están. Y no importa entonces dónde estarán. Pero tengo muchos de mi equipo también que son uh, niños mexicanos o niños ecuatorianos, boricuas, cubanos, dominicanos. Y, y pues yo soy como el niño y de oro. Y quiero que ellos saben que ellos también pueden hacer un niño de oro también y conseguir sus sueños y lograr las metas y ser campeones también en este deporte si eso es lo que ellos quieren. Eh, una última pregunta de mi parte. Tienes ahorita, la, tal vez Bellator en México, en Latinoamérica, no tiene tal vez toda la, la penetración que puede tener otra la UFC, ¿no? Algo que le quieras decir a la gente que te va a ver, que ya con esta nueva oportunidad del cinturón, porque ya lo habías disputado, pero con esta nueva oportunidad, algo que le quieras decir a toda esa gente que te va a conocer, que te va a ver. Sí, eso es lo que también me inspira y me da mucha motivación y es algo bien grande que ya que estamos con CBS y pues que pueden ver mis peleas por eso, sobre todo el mundo y Ah, pues me voy a quedar humilde, pero quiero que toda la gente sabe que pues eso no importa. Primero Dios, que hay que poner Dios primero y todo uh, pues saldrá bien. Y pues nunca se olviden que sí se puede y todo es posible con Dios. Y hay que seguir adelante. Muchas gracias. Muchísimas gracias, hermano. Dios me lo bendiga. Felicidades, señor Sánchez. Muchísimas gracias, hermano. Um, my question, just only one question. What True. do you want to give um, thank you to your fans or anybody who helped you with this fight? And if you can say in the Spanish too. No, sí, pues tengo uno de mis compañeros aquí que se llama Brian Bautista Vargas. Él me ha entrenado ya como cuatro o cinco años que me ha visto ya mi carrera y con todas mis peleas también. También con el, el chino Cristian Rodríguez, uh, Yacir Rodríguez, otros mexicanos y otros, uh, pues mis paisanos van ¿no? a otros países y mi gente, la raza mexicana, ecuatoriana, boricua, cubana, dominicana, como, como dije en el, la otra entrevista, pero uh, pues... Quiero decir que, pues, así es, que hay que poner Dios primero, todo saldrá bien. Nunca, no me sé rajar, entonces, nunca rendir, rendirse jamás y seguir adelante. Puro adelante, ponte las pinas y así es. Primero Dios y todo saldrá bien y nunca se olvide que sí se puede. Gracias, felicidades. Muchísimas gracias, hermano. Thank you, Manuel. Thank you, brother, appreciate it. Thank you, brother. And take this water, too.